Okay, so I'm going to talk you through how to complete the square. Here's our example. Um, the first thing you need to remember when you're completing the square is that the coefficient on the x squared term, in other words, the a, needs to be 1. So in this case, it's 2. So we're going to start by dividing every term by 2. So just to like get rid of that coefficient. Make sure that you're dividing the 0 by 2. You're obviously going to get 0, but I just don't want you to forget that you can't just divide one side by 2 and not the other side. So 2x squared divided by 2 is just x squared. 6x divided by 2 is a positive 3x. And negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. Um, and then 0 divided by 2 is still 0. What I like to do when I'm completing the square, and you don't have to do this, is to get the x terms on their own side and the constant term on the other side, just so I don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus 3x is equal to 5, because I've added 5 to both sides. I've also left this space here because I'm going to need that space for when I actually complete the square. So now I'm going to complete the square. Remember what we're doing here is creating artificially a perfect square trinomial. So we can take the square root of it really, really easily. Um, so to do that, we're going to take this b term, divide it by 2, and then square it. So 3 divided by 2 is 1.5. I'm going to write it as 3 over 2. And then 3 over 2 squared is 9 over 4. Remember that you can square the numerator and square the denominator. So 9 fourths. And then I need to add 9 fourths to the other side too. Okay, now I can um, factor this. And to factor it, it's going to be x plus 3 over 2. It's always just going to be half of the b term. So don't kill yourself trying to figure out how to do it. <laughs> When, when you find this term, you're also figuring out what this term is because you did this b divided by 2 and got 3 halves. And you could multiply that out to convince yourself that it's the same as this. Then on the other, oh, and it's squared, obviously. Then on the other side, you've got 5 plus 9 fourths, um, which I think is 29 fourths, right? Because you can rewrite 5 as 20 fourths. Yep. Good. Now we're going to take the square root of both sides. Square root, square root. Because remember, we're trying to get x by, x by itself. So then we have x plus 3 over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 29. And I'm going to write it over 2 because I did the square root of 4. And that's going to just be a little bit easier when we do our next step which is subtracting 3 halves from both sides. So now we have x. I'm going to rewrite this at the top. Now we have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 29 minus 3 all over 2. OK. We can't simplify this. Um, it's all over 2 because since both terms are over 2, that's the same as the whole thing being over 2. Um, in this case, our answers are real because there is not a negative inside our square root. If you got the square root of a negative number, that's fine. It just means that they're imaginary solutions. Um, yeah, and that's it. So hopefully this makes sense. If not, try one of the other learn resources or come to office hours and I will re-explain it, allowing you to stop for questions. Um, but move on to the practice. Try the Desmos.